Well, hello, friends. Um, today, we are going to look a little bit at making a new device. Um, and specifically, I want to make one for debug output. And um, I noticed this thing after yesterday, I added the ability to see how many syscalls are happening. And I noticed that um, the Windows server is just like spamming syscalls. And uh, the more I tried to debug it, the more I would spam them. Um, and it turned out that uh, the way that my debug printf function is implemented um, in user space um, is that it sends one character at a time to the kernel, uh, and then the kernel prints that to the debugger. And um, that's not super ideal, right? Because then uh, here it is, debug printf calls printf internal with um, this helper function here, it's just put char, and um, what this guy does, he just does a syscall. So for every character that we debug printf, we do a syscall. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, it's just causing a grotesque number of syscalls to take place. So every one of these characters here in the debugger is one syscall. Um, and that's crazy. So we can definitely reduce the amount of context switching by um, doing something smarter here. So I think I, what we're going to do is that we are going to make a new device. And um, we are going to call it uh, debug, um, debug log device. OK. Yep. And we'll add it to the make file. Uh, call it debug log device. OK. Now, what are we going to do with this device? Well, we have two kinds of devices in the Serenity, like your average Unix system. Uh, and I can't type while I do this. So uh, there are two types of devices. There are block devices and character devices, right? And uh, block devices are random access devices, like a hard drive or um, like a GPU RAM or something like that. And a character device is a sequential device, like um, like a serial uh, console or a stream of some type. Um, and um, of course, this is going to be a character device because the debug log is uh, just a stream um, and specifically going in one direction, actually. Um, so because we don't care to read from the stream, right? So we just need it to be able to write. Um, so let's see. Uh, do I remember how to do this? Let me bring up a cheat sheet here with, uh, with some other existing device. Null device, that's fine. OK. So this is the device for dev null. Um, it's quite straightforward. We will just do a little bit of copy pasting here and um, change the relevant things. Uh, we don't need, or we do need that. Um, so, so here's one thing that because we only care about being able to write to it, then we can very easily implement um, read by just returning null, uh, zero, and can read uh, would return false, because we can never read. Um, but that's actually not the right way to do it. We should return true, because read will always succeed and will always return 0. Um, maybe there's a smarter way of doing this. I'm not sure. But that's how we're going to do that. And for write, this is where we're going to do something more interesting. Um, and uh, just a note on how these work. So basically, character devices, they, they care about reading and writing. And uh, read and write are, you know, you can figure out what those <laughs> things do. But can write and can read, these are used to implement the um, select syscall currently. So when you select on something, then on a file descriptor, then it will um, use the return value from can write and can read to uh, determine if select should um, consider this file descriptor like readable or writable. Um, so in this case, like um, trying to determine if you can write to the debug log device will always say, yeah, of course you can write to it because it's just always going to be 
um, ready to receive data. There's no buffering need or anything, we're just going to dump it straight to the debugger. Um, okay, so now we're going to do the implementation stuff, and um, that would be kernel devices, a debug log device. Um, and we'll, we can sort of copy a lot of this stuff here, actually. Let's just copy everything and uh, change it around. Debug log device, place all. Okay, now go away. Right. Then, um, can read, we don't care. And here, in write, this is where things um, actually happen. So, what we want to do is, uh, let's call it data, and let's data size. And now, I think the way that uh, we print to the debugger is, um, it's specific to uh, these emulators like Box and QEMU. And it's actually specific to the Box emulator. Um, I've just hacked uh, QEMU to behave the same way locally here. Um, and what, it, what we do is that uh, we send everything that we want to go to the debugger, we just send to IO port E9. So Box has this feature out of the, out of the box, um, but QEMU, I needed to hack it. So um, we are just going to do that here uh, for each character that is written to this device. Um, OK, so data size, plus plus i. Um, and we'll say data i. OK. And then we will just return the data size. So um, note here that we uh, the return value here is how much we wrote. So for a buffered device, um, we might return less. But um, in this case, we always succeed because we always just write the whole thing. OK. So I think that takes care of that part. But now we actually need this thing to show up somewhere in the file system so that we can write to it. And um, let's see how we do that. So right now, this is where the major and minor device numbers are set. We, uh, they are numbers that we pass to the character device constructor. Um, so since we copied null, it already has one, three here. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in the file system. So here in slash dev, we have these different files. So one comma three, that's dev null, right? Um, and then we have one comma seven, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I guess we'll just add something new here. We'll call it maybe like um, one comma, um, some cool number. Um, how about uh, 15? Because why not? Or how about the 18th, actually? Because today is the 18th. OK. Uh, you see how these decisions are, are made. Um, and then we want to um, actually edit the file system creating creation script here to create one of those device files. So we're going to call it debug log. And um, what was 18? Um, and then we will uh, run the sync script. Um, and let's just make sure that everything looks okay. Yeah, so the, uh, the device is here, 1 comma 18 is the debug log. Um, and we still haven't actually instantiated the debug log device, so it's we need to do that now. So uh, the way I currently do that is I just in the init uh, function, which is the very first thing that runs in the kernel. I just create a bunch of these devices. So we'll do the same for this one. Debug log device. Um, and let's go and make that before everything else, actually. Um, OK, debug log device. And. Included log device. So of course we're still gonna use the the I/O direct I/O stuff inside of the kernel. So like the kernel's version of, of debug printf, um, it will keep 
doing this because here it's fine because there's no like it's just call overhead or anything we are just like this expands it literally expands to a single out extract instruction so this couldn't be any more efficient here um, but um, in user space when we want to print to the debugger what we're going to want to do instead is uh, instead of calling the put char sys call um, we are going to want to let's see uh, I guess v, uh, int thread vf printf. Um, we can call it stddbg. And we'll make a magical new uh, standard file descriptor um, that works like this. Uh huh. Let me get rid of this. And we'll call it stddbugger. And we will add on these guys. And on initialization, we'll do uh, default streams. And let's see. Um, file. How do we do this? Um, dev debug log. Um, oh, right only. Error. That is really unfortunate if that doesn't work. And that will be that one. Okay, so this is maybe not the most beautiful thing, but we are going to open dev debug log um, in every process. And um, perhaps we could open it on demand, but right now I'm just going to open it eagerly on startup. Um, okay, let's see how that works out. What am I forgetting? So I think that when we create the debug log device, it calls the character device constructor, uh, which calls the device constructor. And the device constructor will go and magically tell the virtual file system that this device now exists, uh, which will add it to the lookup table for this major and, mi major and minor number. Um, so everything should be sort of in place now. And let's see if it works. No, it does not work because we are too early. We can't be calling um, dev debug log this dang early, but that doesn't matter. So it needs the VFS to exist first. Um, that's okay. Okay, debug log permission denied. Uh -huh. See, now, now we're having some some other types of problems here. It's good that the permission checking is, is working. Um, debug log, and it needs to be M666. Um, pseudo sync. Come on, friend. OK. Look at that. We have, still have all the debug output, and we still have a grotesque amount of syscalling. Why is that happening? Let's find out. Um, bum, 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 bum. STDIO, um, debug printf, calling VF printf, which does F put C. Oh, um, oh, did I not make it line buffered? I didn't make it line buffered. So here, see, we got to make it line buffered. Um, let's rebuild everything. So um, in STDIO, the streams can be 
um, line buffered, which means that we wait until we have a whole line of text before we actually write to the file descriptor. Um, otherwise, what we do is we just like write every character as it comes, exactly like the old stuff worked, um, which we don't want. So to fix this, just to um, pass the IO LBF uh, line buffer argument when we create the file. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on, friend. Let's see. Well, it's looking a bit more reasonable, I have to say. So, that's more like it. Um, great. So, I think that, uh, of course, there's still a lot of action happening, but we are also printing a lot. Um, and I happen to be running with uh, a bunch of extra debug counters and stuff here, so um, I'll show you what it looks like with uh, not so much debugging enabled. Um, okay, come here. So it's pretty good. If I don't touch it at all, we're doing less than 100 syscalls per second, which is dramatically better than what we had yesterday. But I, I did spend, actually, I did spend some time uh, fixing various things related to this. Um, but yeah, so so this, um, I'm pretty happy with this new device for the debug log. So let's commit it. Mm. Yeah, OK. So let's see what we have, actually. Get diff. Uh, how do you do that? Get the head. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the debug log device is just a simple device implementation, major minor 118. Um, when we write to it, we just take all the data and shove it to iPod port E9. Um, and then here's the, the class definition, or declaration rather. Um, and for the reads, we just do, um, we just tell it it's like end of file, basically, if you try to read from it. It's fine. And add it to the build system. And then we create it right after we create the VFS. That's the very first thing we create. I think that's, that's good. Um, and then here we add it to the sync script. And we make sure we create it with mode 666 so that anyone can open and write to it. Um, and down here we are adding a std dbg in addition to st the other standard streams kind of a cool little thing um i rather like that um i think i'm gonna keep it that way for now um i'm thinking like should the kernel even open this for you automatically but i think i think this is better we do it in the libc that's okay um and then here, yeah, we get rid of the, the old syscall-based um, debug printf and replace it with um, vf printf to standard debug. Um, and here's the declaration of that. Okay, very good. Uh, okay, libc plus kernel or kernel plus libc. Um, add a debug log device. Um, da, 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 da. That uh, forwards everything to everything written, everything to uh, IO port. This is uh, used then used uh, to implement the user space debug printf in a far more efficient way than what we had before. Very cool. Okay. So, um, that is very nice. That was a very successful hack. I'm, I'm surprised that it was so easy. Um, so, I think that about concludes today's video. So, if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching and for coming back, and I'll see you next time.